Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and today I'm going to add another building to the city because although this side is completely jam-packed full of wall-to-wall -wall buildings the other side isn't uh, and I'm going to have buildings all down that far side uh, but before then I've got these two rather glaring gaps in the strip alongside the second standing hole so I'm going to get on with filling one of those. <coughs> So there is the SSP riot van, which I've just put behind the uh, station there, just as a holding position for until we get some more funny scenes going. Uh, and I haven't really had time to do all of the amendments for Honeydukes yet either, uh, but you can see I have made a start in that I have added two rather large lollipops to the roof, just to uh, break up that rather large expanse of grey. And I've done that using two swirl patterned uh, 4x4 dish pieces uh, with uh, some bar pieces coming out as the sticks. So do tell me if you like that one as a starting position, but I think that is quite a good start. Uh, I also added the uh, window sticker that I'd uh, forgotten in error from the upstairs, so that's really good to have that in place as well. So thanks for those early suggestions. Here is your Bedoin and uh, I'll get on to the rest of those in due course. Uh, but now on to today, I'm filling one of these two spaces, here or here, and I haven't really decided yet, and that's partially why I haven't sort of tiled this all in yet, because it might all, uh, you know, have a knock-on effect wherever it goes. Uh, but the build that I'm going to be starting is a museum, because I figure that would be another very grand building to have opposite my main train station here, uh, across the road. And it might be that I move some of the others around to accommodate these, but uh, I'll start off aiming for one of the uh, vacant lots I've got. Uh, and it's been long in demand uh, in the city, a museum. Lots of people want to see that sort of a building. Uh, and there are loads of different themes, of course, that I could do for a museum. Uh, one, of course, is natural history, and that's very popular, having lots of different animals from past and present. In fact, uh, there's so many uh, sort of Jurassic Park sets, isn't there, that you could have a dedicated dinosaur museum quite easily uh, with Jurassic Park bits and bobs, but also those sort of uh, more recent uh, dinosaur skeletons or something like that. I'm sure that would be very easily done. Um, but what I think I'll do instead, uh, rather than another idea actually, <laughs> which is to do a very big history museum where you can use all of these series minifigures like the Egyptians and the Romans and even that recent uh, series Aztec warrior and have all sorts of different scenes from around the world uh, being represented uh, as exhibits. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not going to do that one either. What I'm going to do is do an art museum. Uh, and that's largely because uh, the museum that... Mrs. Hood and I would head for when going to any large city that we are visiting all around the world uh, would be an art museum. Uh, so I thought we could have a combination of pieces from existing sets and bits of modern art that I can build out of bricks as the exhibits in my museum. So let's get down to the building desk and you'll see what I mean when we get started. Now I'm sure some people would say that you can judge a city by the quality of its museums uh, and that's why I want Brick Nottingham's Art Museum to be a real triumph. I mean Brick Derby, uh, our neighbouring city, has got its own museum so we have to do better than that uh, and that is a museum dedicated to shiny things. So maybe the bar's a bit low, uh, easy for us to do better but uh, that still doesn't mean that we can be complacent. So I've recruited the help uh, here of two uh, museum security guards today uh, and they've both got the same sort of currently sweating face which doesn't seem that appropriate in that they are from an Ultra Agent set, Hurricane Heist 70164 uh, which is the one with Cyclone in it uh, and I figured I didn't really want those heads so I thought I'd change both of them out to create first of all Sam the security guard who has got his headpiece and is looking rather mean with that brow. <laughs> rather sort of fun expression, I think. I mean, you wouldn't mess with him, would you? So there we go. There's Security Sam. 
and if we get rid of the other sweating head then why not have a lady as well as part of the team and have her as security sally yeah i don't think you'd mess with her either so there we go so properly socially distanced we've got to uh, two security guards to help us, and they'll be working in this building. Right, so the uh, base set for this idea, I usually base something on, on an existing set, which is the 60008 Museum Break-In set from 2013. And we did look at this very recently, of course, because that set had the riot van in it that we use for the basis of the one that I converted for the super secret police. Uh, and it's also got a wonderful police helicopter and a wonderful crooks van that I think we'll see in the city in due course. Uh, but the main bit that we're going to focus on from that set today is the building, which I very much like the look of, uh, the kind of feel and style that that's built in, and a lot of its features. Uh, I mean, it's uh, very ornate in that it's got sort of columns and all the rest of it. It's got a clock uh, at the top there, uh, lovely red banners with a sort of M for museum on, security lasers, spotlights, and even a skylight uh, at the top, which enables us to sort of model uh, a break-in by one of uh, Brick Nottingham's many, many crooks and bad guys. So I think I want to keep that style, keep that feel of that building, and keep virtually all of those features as well. Uh, but I do want to make it a lot bigger because that building is far too small. I mean, it was based on kind of a 16 by 16 uh, plate, uh, and also it was only one story tall. So I'm going to double the surface area by having it on a 16 by 32 plate to fit in one of those uh, spaces that we had, base plate rather. Uh, and I'm also going to double the height in that we're going to have two fully full floors uh, so that means we'll have quadruple the fun in this build. Now, I will have the back of this build open. Uh, and that's for several reasons, really. Uh, partially so we can see all of the good stuff that we're going to be building on the inside, because it's such a shame when you seal all of that up, um, put all the lids on, and then you really can't see in it unless you lift it all off. Uh, but also because it won't be visible, that back angle, from the main viewing angle of what the doorway into the Lego room or the first standing hole. So that means it's all right in my design rules to have an open back. Uh, and lastly, just because it's on the edge of that standing hole, it kind of works because, you know, you'll it represents the guillotine that's come down to create that hole. And it kind of has signifies to me that this building's even bigger but a guillotine has come down and sort of chopped it in half and we're kind of looking at a cross section of the insides of it so in that respect we don't need to worry with any stairs or anything like that because they'll be further into the back sort of half of the building that we can't even see so uh yeah so i think i do want to add a lot more details than were in that original set just keep going on that sort of uh, vibe that we had but the main focus is going to be adding some really interesting exhibits. Uh, that existing one didn't have that many. It did have one painting. It kind of had a jewel in a case and uh, uh, I think it was a sword or something like that. Not very much to see. But I'm going to be doing all of mine as artworks. Uh, and hopefully it will be a real triumph and will beat Brick Darby's effort. <laughs> so I'm going to make a start with the front door. And for that, I've got just this setup being kind of like that uh, and yeah so far so ordinary really or oh, I should really explain uh, all of the tiles I put around the outside I want the edges slightly recessed because we're going to have a roof that goes over the edges uh, a little bit uh, and in that regard I don't want it clashing with the neighboring building so we're going to have to have the walls in a little from the sides uh, and then this is just a contrast really just to give the uh, pavement area a bit of interest as well where uh, it's going to be right in front of the windows uh, and maybe it's designed to actually keep people away from peering too closely into those windows as a security sort of uh, thing uh, right yes so I've got the main uh, ones in there and what I'm going to do is have kind of a raised stairway up to that door which will make it look a lot more grand and in that regard it's very similar to the old set except I've done it slightly higher I think uh, and because we're going to actually go straight into the main pavement area because this is going to be uh, right next to a road it's going to have six deep studs 
as the regular pavement here, uh, I can sort of intrude into that just a little bit. So when we get to the uh, street side, I will actually be adding this in. So the sort of red carpet type stairway uh, protrudes slightly into the pavement. And I think that will draw the eye uh, a little bit even more. Uh, and then just so once you've gone through this doorway, you don't have a massive drop and do yourself a mischief. I've just got a similar sort of step for the inside. I've made that as small as possible so we don't use up too much floor space. So these bits I am going to put to one side for now. Uh, I'll put them back there, uh, but they will be part of the build. Uh, and then for the rest of the sort of surround, uh, I am just going to have a very similar setup to the original set in that I'm going to have these sort of bands of color of gray, then tan, gray, tan, all the way up. And I'm going to have sort of intermittent pillars around the windows just to give it that more grand look. So yeah, I'm really echoing back to that set. So when people do see this build, they should think, oh, I've got that set. Um, but hold on, mine's a little bit different. And that's kind of the vibe I'm going for rather than creating a sort of great big 100% um, mock that would be, you know, it's almost sort of modular in its uh, design. So there we go. So that's that bit. Uh, and then the one bit that I really wanted to not lose, and you'll see I've left a one brick space gap here uh, from the original, was this. Uh, and that was the sort of laser defense system that would protect the door from intruders when the uh, museum is closed. Uh, and it's just hinged down on this Technic brick, as you can see in this uh, lift arm. And basically how it works, let's hope it doesn't smash Robin in the face. No, it's not that long. How it works is it goes like that. And we put that back on. So it's kind of normal from the outside. Uh, and when the museum is open, that would be retracted and you wouldn't see it at all. Very good. Uh, but then when the museum is shut and we want to protect it from intruders, the security system gets put on and you can see there's laser beams across the door. Uh, the fact that we've got a skylight at the top that they all get through, well, that's <laughs> that's the fun bit, I suppose, the fact that they haven't bothered to put security uh, on the other main point of entry. But I really like that feature, and I think it's uh, really good fun, and it's kind of obvious what it is. And the fact that it's kind of a play feature, which I also like to include wherever I can in my builds, uh, makes it even better. Ooh, siren. Um, so there we go. So that is my basis for the uh, walls. Uh, so I think the next stage is to start building them a little bit higher and start putting the exhibits in as well. Now the original set had lots of plants growing on the outside and I may well add some in due course, but what I don't want to do is have this getting in the way of a neighboring building sort of protruding uh, elements or whatever, because I have made that GBC uh, a little bit proud of its edges. So essentially, uh, I don't want it conflicting with this one. So I'm going to keep the walls bare for now, uh, bearing in mind that these are all going to be jammed also so close together that I doubt you'd even notice. So the main focus is on the front, uh, but on the inside, we definitely can use those walls. So what I'm going to do here is just continue each of those pillars up and have a relatively blank wall. We've kind of continued that pattern, but with the uh, double tan colored stripe. And you'll see I've put a modified brick in there so we can mount our first art exhibit. Now this one should be no surprise for you because it is the one that comes with that museum break-in set, being the girl with a pearl earring. Indeed, I mentioned it last time as being painted by Johannes Vermeer in around 1665, as all you art buffs will already know. So that is a very easy one for me to add, uh, and a very good start as well. But I thought just to make it a bit more interesting, I'd add kind of a little gold plaque, which probably told you who painted it and all the rest of it, part of a frame. But that looks a bit, well, a bit non-impressive all on its own. So I thought I'd build the rest of a frame around it like this. Uh, and it's not incredibly well held together in that it is just a few plates uh, on the back, one by fours and a one by six, uh, and then some tiles on the front. But I think the fact that now it is a bit 3D and the painting's kind of recessed a little bit from the surface does make it look a lot more impressive and much more like the masterpiece it is. So basically I can then mount that on the wall about here, I reckon, kind of in the middle there. And that will be strong enough to uh, hold itself together. 
uh, and that can be our first art exhibit. Uh, now, I haven't got a huge amount of hanging space, especially since we've made the entire front wall out of windows. So really, I'm going to have to make some little pedestals to put more artworks on. So I've just used a 1x2x2 brick. A jumper plate and then another modified brick here so I can mount another painting kind of in the window recess. Now that's quite unrealistic because you'd have light shining through onto the back of it and it would also be quite easy to sort of steal through the window I suppose uh, but I bet they've got security glass. Um, but what I thought I'd use for this is a very small painting. And this is actually an official Lego sticker, though I have done some Lego sticker surgery on it to make it mounted to this uh, two by three yellow tile. Uh, so this is from the 8160 Cruncher Block and Racer X set from 2008, where there were three paintings kind of all mounted side by side on a horrible lime background uh, in the back of that truck. I can't work out why <laughs> or, or what they were doing there, if they were stolen or if they were just decorating a sort of mobile office or what. Um, but I've managed to get all three of those paintings on panels in different brick halls over the months. Uh, and what I've done is carefully chopped around the outside of each of those stickers, having removed them carefully using my patented hot tea technique. <laughs> Uh, and then mounted them onto appropriate sized pieces. So in this case, it was absolutely perfect for a two by three tile. So that's what I've done. Uh, and this clearly is a sort of Legoized version of the Laughing Cavalier, a painting by Franz House in 1626, who is also a Dutch painter. So we must have a Dutch painter corner over here, I suppose, in this museum. So we've already got a couple of sort of uh, old masters represented there, uh, but I think that is starting to look a lot like a gallery. Uh, and then from the same set, I've done exactly the same process to mount this painting onto a different 2 by 3 tile. Uh, this one black, of course. Uh, now, I don't think that this one is actually a famous painting uh, in real life. At least it's not one that I recognise. Uh, do let me know if you know what this is a Legoized version of. It seems to be a knight in shining armour with his sword uh, in kind of an archway. Anyway, I'm unfamiliar with that one. But nonetheless, I will not complain and I will use it on another plinth to go right here next to the door. So we're really starting to fill up our museum. And yeah, it's looking like it's jam-packed full of art. So, right, I better get on to doing the other side, where I think we're going to go a lot more modern. Okay, so for this side, I'm going to do pretty much exactly the same build. Slightly different modified brick in the wall, but uh, no biggie. Uh, and I'm, as I say, I'm going to go for sort of more modern art on this side. Maybe this is sort of the junction where you decide to go old school or new school when you uh, get into the museum. I'm not going to bother with a ticket office or anything like that because it's just going to take up space. Uh, and maybe because of the uh, benevolence of the uh, mayor of Brick Nottingham, maybe this whole exhibition is free. I know a lot of the uh, museums in London uh, are free in the UK and in a way culture should be free so I think that is a really good thing to continue uh, in here. Uh, the fact that we haven't got a gift shop either, well let's not go there. Right, so the first painting that I want to mount to the walls is one that is based on P.A. Mondrian's Composition C from 1935 uh, and this is my Lego version of that and you'll see it's very similar indeed. Uh, and I think actually one of the most favourite ones that I've uh, made out of, <laughs> out of bricks, to be honest. As soon as I made that, I thought, well, yep, that's making the grade. That's definitely getting pride of place in my museum. And it's kind of based on a 5x5 five five build, which I've just done out of a 4x4 four four and some other things to make it up. And then it's kind of held together by the tiles, much like our earlier one on this wall. But I just thought that looked really great. So I'm going to mount that on this wall over here uh, about 
Should we go there? In fact, I'm going to leave it off the wall until I've done the second one, because the second one is going to be even more controversial, just because, well, it's really controversial in real life. And it's going to be a great big 3D structure that takes up a lot of the floor. Now, I have to give a credit out for this one, because I didn't actually come up with this build. When I was Googling pieces of art uh, to be done in Lego, somebody had actually done this, and it was such a brilliant idea. I thought, well, I just have to steal it. Uh, and I think that's what Lego building is about. Uh, as long as credit is given, I think Lego is for taking other people's ideas and adding your own twist to them or what have you. So uh, I give this credit out to uh, somebody called Little Artists, uh, who in 2005 came up with a build for Tracy Emin's My Bed from 1998. And that done in Lego form is kind of a Lego bed. <laughs> with sort of mattress and sheets and pillows and all the rest of it. But I'm going to just plonk in this corner. And then next to that is the sort of bedside table or nightstand, I think some people call them, with bits and bobs on, drinks and mess and all the rest of it. Uh, and then the mat by the side of the bed, which is just covered with tissue boxes and glasses and mugs and all sorts of stuff like that. And even old letters all sort of spilling uh, into the floor. Now, why this is a work of art is very much open to debate. Uh, I'm not sure I like it. I'm not sure I even get it. <laughs> but why not have it as part of the exhibition in Brick Nottingham? Because it definitely is famous and it will definitely get people talking. Uh, but that is a really good build by a little artist. So thanks very much for uh, that. Uh, full credit to you for that one. But my own creation of the P.A. Mondrian one can now go above there. Uh, that's why I wanted to get it in first. I could kind of get the height right. I reckon that's probably the right height. So we can have a Mondrian above my bed. There we go. So we're really starting to fill up this floor. Uh, but I really do feel that even with security guards, we need something else in this region here. All right, so far, so awesome, I think. Looking good, lots of colors and shapes so far. Uh, but what I need to do is put something in this area. And what I thought I'd do is kind of have the beginning of kind of an intervening wall uh, that you'd have to go one side of or the other to separate the museum into sort of two different uh, areas uh, and have basically a painting on each side of that dividing wall, thus giving us a lot more wall space. Uh, and the first painting that I already had that I could use is basically in the same set as these two, uh, the 8160 Cruncher Block and Racer X set. Uh, and that is this one, which is of a cherub with wings kind of leaning on his elbow. And this isn't a painting in real life. Rather, it is actually part of a very famous painting, specifically the Sistine Madonna by Raphael painted in 1513 to 14. Uh, and this is, is actually located in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, uh, not to be confused with the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. That was done by Michelangelo, totally different Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, that one. Uh, this is actually part of a painting uh, hanging on one of the walls in the same room. Uh, and I was having real trouble in how to use this painting just because of its dimensions. It was too wide to fit on one of those tiles uh, in that it is about, well, two and a half, two and three quarter kind of studs wide, as well as being about three tall. Uh, but then I remembered from the Honeyduke set, I had this frame here, this three by uh, one by three by three frame. Uh, and it just turns out that it fits perfectly on the piece of glass uh, that would go in that. So I'm going to use the window kind of the wrong way around, if you will, as the frame for that piece of art. And look, it looks brilliant, I think. So that one is absolutely perfect there. So I'm going to have that kind of mounted on one side of this wall. Uh, and on the other side, I'm going to use a similar technique with a different shaped piece of Lego glass. And that is this one, which kind of depicts some very uh, old Eastern cavalry, uh, probably from China, because it is from the 80105 Chinese New Year Temple Fair set from 2020. Uh, and I didn't know if this was supposed to be one of those uh, shadow puppet type uh, 
things where they've got the bright light behind. I think it is because we've got the sort of sticks that are controlling the horse and the men, the motion. So really there'd be kind of puppeteers controlling uh, those behind the screen. But I'm going to ignore that and pretend that this is actually a very valuable piece of Eastern art. Uh, so I'm going to mount that one to a normal 1x4x3 frame. Uh, and then that doesn't look too bad either, I don't think. And if I have them back to back against the wall, I think that that will look very good indeed. So, uh, yeah, I had to get creative with how to build this bit of wall because I want to have both of these mounted, as I say, uh, and it's not very easy with them being different shapes. So what I've come up with is this weird build here with some uh, normal wall colour bricks here and some of those uh, one by twos with a round sort of stud on, and that's so they can support the different uh, shaped canvases. So the one with two brackets will hold the four long one, and it'll clip onto that, so it kind of overhangs on both sides. Uh, and then the three long one can just go on a central stud like that. Uh, and then that one needs holding in place, so we'll just use a couple of tiles here, so that's all held together very firmly. So you might think, well, that just looks odd, and you've even used Technic bricks in there. What's going on? Well, then I'm going to add this surround. So it looks like a wall from that side, and it looks like a wall from that side, but it's holding both of those pictures centrally on it between those pillars. You see what I mean? So when I put that on here, and I just want to make sure I'm not going to whack that, so that seems to be about the right place for it like that, put that back up. So then we've got our Eastern art from China on that wall. And then in part of the sort of older art section, we've got that wonderful Raphael cherub there. Yes. So this wall doesn't go all the way up to the same height as the others. And that's deliberate because I don't want it really getting knocked by the roof when we put it on, because I do want this to be able to sort of lift off each layer, even though it is open at the back. Uh, because getting full access and having a nice pier inside whenever you want to is very important. Uh, but with the wall space we've gained there, we've got two other really good pieces of art in. And though I could add, I suppose, some more sort of pedestals or something like that, I think we do need some space for our public to be able to walk around in. So I think that might be the insides full. Right, so there's not much to look at from the outside as it currently stands. I mean, this building will get a lot more grand as we add the second floor and then the roof. But yeah, there's not a huge amount to look at, but I think we can improve that a great deal by adding our columns. And you can see I've left a space for them either side of the door because we want this to be a very grand entrance, much like that original build. So what I've got is some columns with the kind of uh, ridged round bricks just to make them contrasting from the ones that are making up part of the walls. And I think they look a lot better actually. Uh, and then to connect those to the wall, I'm just going to have one more and a tile there. And that means that when the next layer comes on, it's got a nice firm base to fit on uh, and will be liftable off. And the pillar can continue from that point onwards uh, in the second story. Uh, and then just to finish off this little lip, that's where I'm going to add the first of our wonderful red museum signs. Now they do have a big picture of a gem on them, and I think that's because the original had the uh, sort of prize uh, uh, exhibit being a big red gem, and that's probably the one the uh, thieves are trying to steal. But nonetheless, maybe that's just its logo, so I'm kind of happy with that. Uh, and we can have uh, loads of adverts on the side of the bus have got that sort of logo on and so on. And um, I think there might even be some of the relatively recent sticker pack that are sort of similar. So it'll all tie in quite well, regardless. So obviously we need two of those. So I'll put the second one on there. And that is nice and firm. And remember, we will have this part of the step sort of coming out as well. Now, some bits stolen from the original set include a couple of spotlights that are kind of looking up as if it's some sort of gala opening uh, and a sort of lighting up the front of the building. And I think that's often true of ones like this. So although it might sort of look like it will get in the way of uh, pedestrians, I'm going to probably mount those right on the edge of the pavement next to the road, sort of looking up at the building, kind of like that. So I think that will be good. Uh, another thing I've got is this sign saying museum 
Now this one is from the museum that comes in the 60200 Capital City set. That's much more recent. Uh, and that's not much of a build, to be honest. So I'm not going to include that anywhere in my city. But I did have these two bricks with these nice stickers on. So I don't know where I'm going to put this. I mean, I could almost just whack it sort of here, almost sort of implying that uh, if you're on the tourist bus, this is where you get off for the museum, uh, like you couldn't notice already. But anyway, I'll probably put that somewhere in the vicinity, so that can go like there. Uh, and then I've got two spots available up here, and that's to add to the security that's given by our two security guards and our laser door protection, uh, and that is some cameras. So I've got some security cameras uh, and they're basically built onto these ball and joint pieces uh, and the other side of that can be built straight into the wall. So they can be angled wherever they want. In fact, they can have a good look around, see who's coming in, see who's lurking outside and maybe even sort of point down the alleys or something like that either side. So that's quite simple. It's just uh, the sort of pair of ball and joint bricks. One of these sort of, well, it's almost the camera already with the camera tile, with the tape on, and an aerial and a light on the top of that. But having one of those on each side makes it look even more well protected. So I really like that as well. So there we go. What a wonderful start to our museum. Lots of interest from the front, from the cameras, to the banners, to the big thing here, the lights and our security guards. And then if we move all that to one side, and have a look on the inside, we've got our modern art side with our Mondrian painting, our Tracy Emin controversial My Bed. We've got some Eastern art here from China, an unknown artist one here from uh, that set, Laughing Cavalier, very famous indeed, the girl with the pearl earring, very famous indeed, and then even an old master in the form of a Raphael painting. These must be incredibly valuable, and that's why I'm protecting them so well. But I think that's a really good start. Well, I think that's a really good start to my museum. I think uh, collecting all of those parts for the uh, paintings, especially all the stickered parts from all of my brick calls, has been a real success. It's been months getting all of those, <laughs> so uh, it's really nice to finally get them used. But overall, I'm really happy with my ground floor. Uh, I think next Monday we're definitely going to have to continue with this build and build the next floor up. Uh, otherwise I'll get complaints and we'll probably be able to squeeze the roof into that second part as well and get the whole thing finished. Uh, and I've got even better works of art planned for the upstairs as well. So do look forward to that. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And uh, if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, well, whether we have a brick haul or not this week very much depends on the postal service. I do have a package that is incoming that I can do, but I've got a bit behind with ordering recently, so I do not have any backlog. So uh, if there's no package, there'll be no haul. <laughs> and that may be shock to uh, some of you, uh, but... I've always done that, to be honest. I've just had a lot of hauls recently, so it feels like I've had a very unbroken run. Uh, but if I don't have a haul, there isn't a haul video. Uh, either way, uh, if there is or there isn't, I'll be back on Friday for another fairground update. And then I think we'll get on with part two of this next Monday. So until then, see you!